Hi, I'm Colleen Taylor with TechCrunch TV. Today here in the studio, we are very excited to have with us internationally best-selling author Nicholas Sparks, who is known for writing such books as The Notebook, Message in a Bottle, Walk to Remember, The Lucky One, Dear John. A lot of these, or all of these, have actually been made into movies, and here he is. Here I am. It's, it's exciting. Here we all are. Thank you for coming by. Oh, I'm, it's great. It's it Actually, it was the reason we wanted to come to uh, San Francisco. You know, when you're going out and designing these media tours to promote a film, you know, they have all these different cities. We said, you know what? We really have to head to San Francisco, Silicon Valley, uh, just to kind of learn more about everything that's going on and learn maybe better how to use it and, and whatever we can do, essentially. Great. And I know that, so what you're doing right now is you're promoting a film called The Lucky One, which right. is coming out next week in theaters April 20th. Right, right. Yeah, it comes out. It stars Zac Efron and Taylor Schilling and Blythe Danner. It's a, a, a film based on one of my novels from a couple of years ago. It's a story of this Marine. He finds a photograph and he... Uh, you know, he, he begins to view this photograph as his lucky charm. So after he's done with his deployment, he goes off in search. And after that, it kind of becomes a Nicholas Sparks movie, right? If you like The Notebook or Walk to Remember, you're going to like The Lucky One. It's essentially that. Great. And I know, so, and you mentioned that you're you're sort of on this tour here in San Francisco. Last night, you had a screening of The Lucky One right. at Twitter headquarters. How was that? That was uh, that was a lot of fun. You know, it's uh, it, it's... It's interesting, you know, of course, uh, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm on uh, Google+, Plus, I'm on Foursquare, right? So, you know, you're trying to, we work a lot, I guess, use, we, we work with them as much as we possibly can, whatever that means. And so this is a way to introduce ourselves, say, hey, thanks for everything, here's the film, uh, ask away, ask any questions, right? I think in some ways the worlds are very uh, similar because so much of technology today is very creative, and essentially that's what I make my life. I have, <laughs> you have to come up with stories, right? right? And think of what people are gonna want next and try and anticipate and what have you done in the past and how can we improve it? It's very, very similar because every year essentially I have to come out with a, a new product that uh, has the best features of what I've done before, but then you have to try and build on that. It's very, I think it's actually very similar. That's, that's a really interesting point. Now I want to ask how that has changed since, you know, the early 90s is when you wrote The Notebook, yeah. so your first big hit. Right. And then since then, of course, the, the web, social media. How, how has your process changed in, in writing? Well, the process, uh, less than you would think, uh, because, um, and I think if you talk to anyone in this world or, or my world, really it's it's about thinking. That's really what it comes down to. It's about that. So uh, the process of developing a story has not necessarily changed with, with technology changes. In the end, you're looking for the best possible story that you can come up with, the best characters, the best structure, the best pacing. And you kind of think about this and you put it all, you hold it all in your head and you, and you, and you string it out because you run this, for me, you know, I, I, there's three things I have to do with all these elements. It has to be original, it has to be interesting, and it has to be universal. So everything about the character, everything about the plot, everything about plot elements, they've got to feel familiar. So you're like, I relate to this, but they've got to be original. And you're like, but I've never seen it before, right? He finds, her, he finds a photograph in Iraq, and this is how he first is introduced to the to the woman he falls in love with for instance it's universal it's interesting and yet we've never seen it before so it's a, it's a process of thinking and that necessarily hasn't changed of course <laughs> you promote it afterwards all this has changed very much right right and so are there any apps or gadgets or anything that you particularly use in the writing process especially probably for uh, for writing it is um, if I use anything, it is just for research. You know, you might be looking up, I remember when I was writing The Lucky One, for instance, I was really trying to find the uh, a, a realistic battalion that, that Logan Tebow, he's the character in this film, was from. Because what I was looking for in 2008 was a Marine Corps unit that had been deployed three times into hot areas and had many casualties. Now, now a lot of people have been deployed three times. But back when I was writing it, there was only one, and I had to do a lot of research, which would have been literally impossible, you know, ten years ten years ago to do it as as quickly as I was able to do it. But I was able to find the first fifth out of Camp Pendleton, so that's why Logan Tebow went to the first fifth. He's a member of the first fifth. I see. And and are there any 
tips or tricks because you know you can use Google and these things to find things so quickly, but then it can also you can get into procrastination really quickly. Oh yeah, no question. You know that. Um, it's it's interesting. I think that at least uh, if you if you're trying to be really creative, a little bit of procrastination is not always a bad thing. For instance, you know I try to give this math analogy, and I know everyone watching this will get it very quickly. But look, I write two thousand words a day. It usually takes me five hours. Okay, so it's what, 400 words an hour? I type, if I'm going all out, what, 60 words a minute, right? So theoretically, if it was just typing, you know, and, you know, what am I? I'm thinking 51 minutes, 52 minutes out of every hour, and I'm actually typing the other, you know, eight or nine minutes. So a little procrastination isn't necessarily a bad thing because when you're working through something very complicated, you're looking for a new idea you know, you have to access other parts of your brain, your subconscious sometimes. And so I'll go for a drive, I'll, I'll look at something on, on, on the web, I'll do, I'll do whatever, and then you come back. I see. And you mentioned how your process is actually very similar to someone who's developing a product yeah, at, absolutely. at a tech company. Do you have any things that you do? I mean, you mentioned taking a drive, these things to kind of stimulate your creativity. <laughs> Anything that works, right? <laughs> I think, and I think, uh, well, there's, there's campuses built around this principle. Anything that works, whether it's, uh, for me, and, and, and I think that this is as individual as the individual. Um, I'll walk away, I'll take the dogs for a walk, I'll go for a drive, I'll drive up to and buy a soda and drive back. I don't know why that works for me, but it does. And it's a real short drive, it's only three minutes, but often just in the three minutes up and three minutes back, Total waste of gas, bad for the environment, I admit this. And yet, uh, sometimes that's enough to trigger the next, uh, the idea that I was looking for, so to speak. And let's talk about engaging with your fans. Yeah. You mentioned you're on Twitter, you're on uh, Google Plus, you're on right. these things. Today you're actually doing a Google Plus Hangout. I am, I'm doing a Google Plus ha Hangout and I will be heading over to Facebook later. And last night, of course, I was with the Twitter folks, so to speak. And, and how, how is that? How has that been? I mean, you have such a huge fan base. I, yeah, we're trying and, uh, you know, it's interesting. You know, this is all new, right? This, this whole new engagement. And I don't think I'm alone in saying that uh, how, what's the best way to use this? You know, you have, you have things that take off in this world that not necessarily people understand the reason why. They can't necessarily replicate it all the time. It's the same thing, you know, it's the same reason a book takes off or a film takes off and you're not really sure why, but you say, oh, you know, the Blair Witch Project years ago, put these stories on the web and blah, 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 and next thing you know, this very small film makes, you know, $150 million. So you're like, oh, okay, this is all you have to do. You have to put some stories on the web and then it happens. Of course, someone does it next, and it doesn't work right. So I think everyone's trying to navigate this world and really figure out the best ways to, uh, to maximize it, so to speak. And you know, it's a learning process. And I work with a lot of really good people who are, uh, you know, we're, we're doing our best to navigate this world and try and, and maximize its use for whatever project we're working on. And is it still important to kind of retain an air of mystery or to hold something back? Oh yeah, you know, it's, uh, I think the best way to look at some of these things, you know, I, I have a close 1.2 million you know, fans on Facebook, for instance. Um, that is your, that's my platform, so to speak, and it's, it's interesting. It's a wonderful thing in that you know, I've had 5,000 articles written about me over the years. I've sat through you know, 5,000 interviews, right? Of every, virtually every one has errors in them, just little things. And so this is your own platform, and you're like, you can be who you need to be here. You know, are you funny? You know, are you, uh, is, is charity very, which particular charity do you want to do? Oh, by the way, I have a novel coming out. Hey, this is a great recipe for whatever. So you can really kind of structure whoever you want to be. Um, but that begs the question, who should you be, right? What will benefit you? And so we're, as I said, we're just, we're, we're, I think we're pretty, we're thinking about this very actively though. This is something, this is, these are discussions on a daily basis between me and the people, between me and the people I work with to, right. to figure all this out. And um, the most recent app that, that you've joined or the most recent social network is Fate? Foursquare. Foursquare, Sorry. yeah, Foursquare. We're, we're checking, yeah. checking into TechCrunch right now. This is our first check-in, which is exciting. And of course we'd say, hey, you go uh, check into the theater when you go see The Lucky One, check into a bookstore when you uh, are purchasing uh, one of my novels or, or you know, check into my event when I'm giving a speech or something like that. Of course, we'll be actively doing all that and uh, we'll be encouraging that 
and, it, and see where it leads. Great. And so The Lucky One in theaters it, next week. Right, April 20th. It comes out. At people, it, people will love it. It's a, it's a very strong film. I think uh, Zach Eff, the performances were amazing. It was beautifully shot. Uh, of course, I like the story, so I think people will, re uh, will really love it. Great. Um, thank you so much for coming by and Absolutely. talking to us, Nicholas. We really appreciated having you. So. Thanks.